Hello from sunny, but snowy Colorado. We made it, we made it. So last night we were stuck in those traffic jams that were being caused by the snow plows. And uh, there was a reason those snow plows were out. It's because the conditions or the driving conditions were absolutely diabolical. And that's because there was a bit of snow in Colorado last night. Um, specifically in this area. So as we were driving down the 80, as you saw in my last video, we were, we were stuck behind these two snow plows and they were actually gritting the road, but at the same time they were plowing the sides because the sides were starting to build up. So all you could see was just this massive whoosh, clouds of snow going, whoosh, coming up from the sides and they had, it's such a clever way they do it. They had one snow plow either lane. So they were both just at the, sort, of, um, sort of half on, half off the lane. So what they were, I suppose you would call a hard shoulder in England, but they don't really have a hard shoulder. So they were just plowing off the snow and all the lorries and trucks and cars were all sat behind. And we were just sort of, we were quite safe there behind them, but we had to drive about 30 mile an hour. And there were, there were warning signs telling you that there were snow plows up ahead. Anyway, we got here last night, um, turned up. There was no one to be seen at this campsite. This is a very, very remote and small RV site. There was a number to call. So we did try calling a number and leaving a message, but unfortunately no one answered our message. So we thought, oh, I don't know what's going to go on here, really. We, we were just going to drive into the pitch and then try and contact someone in the morning because we, in our email, it told us that we could turn up till, or what we thought said that we were allowed welcome to come um, from 9 a.m. till 10 p.m. What we later found out is that was actually just guests visiting your spot. So guests can visit from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., but then they obviously have to leave. So eventually we caught the attention of the site manager who was actually upstairs in his house. Now, he wasn't best pleased to see us. I can just tell you that so far. I'm not going to tell you the full story, but a little bit of misunderstanding from us about the time of arrival and a little bit of misunderstanding from him because he initially thought we were just chancers who had just turned up on the off chance that there was a spot, basically told us to go away. <laughs> he told us to get lost and try somewhere else. So there I was with my tail between my legs, literally just about to walk away. And um, he suddenly realized that we were the guests who were supposed to be turning up earlier. And after a little bit of discussion, we, he worked out that, ah, he said, I got worried when you didn't get here for 7 p.m. because he said, I closed this office at 7 p.m. So I was gonna ring you, I was gonna call you, but I didn't know how to call your mobile number. Um, eventually we, <laughs> I apologized to him for us turning up late. He apologized to me for nearly making us go out and find somewhere else to stay. But everything was good in the end. He showed us where our pitch would be, which is just over there. We've got electrical hookup. Yeah. Anyway, it's a beautiful place. Just out of shot over there, you can't really see, but through these trees behind me over there, there is a correctional state facility. So we are right next to that, but that's okay, because we can barely see it, and I'm sure they're keeping all the prisoners safe in there. So um, hopefully no one's escaping from there. Today, we're driving to Colorado Springs. It is once again about another four hour drive, and um, I'm just going to take it nice and slow. Don't know what the roads are going to be like yet. Got to fill up with some more petrol. Um, so far, it's costing us roughly, I think we're getting it down to sort of like a quarter of a tank. And then mm -hmm. and we're filling up about 50, 60 quid's worth of petrol. So, uh, dollars, sorry. So it's not too bad. Um, Cost-wise, petrol is not out of this world expensive. Not what we think anyway. Um, not, cons not compared to England prices. UK prices are pretty high still, so this is pretty, pretty average. Um, there's Emerson, Sully and Keeney enjoying a bit of snow. Emerson, what do you think of this snow? Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Come on. Should we have a little play in the playground? Yeah. We're going to have a little play in the playground over there and yeah. I'll catch up with you guys later to let you know how our journey's been after we've filled up with fuel and we've started making our way to Colorado Springs. This lovely little RV site. It's known as the first and last RV site in Colorado. Uh, I think that's because it's there's nothing else beyond it before you get to the border, which goes back that way. And um, yeah, so and, and then from now on in, it's basically going to be more built up Colorado. So we're right on the outskirts, really, you could say. And uh, is he all right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm just going to take you over here. 
This is where the, uh, the site manager lived, just behind that playground over there. I don't know whether you can see his house there. His name is Jim, lovely man, absolutely lovely man. And uh, just think, thought that we sort of turned up on the off chance. He said he gets a lot of chances who just turn up any time of night. And we come from Southwest London, so we don't get snow like this. London barely ever gets snow, and when it does, it's a real dusting. So this is nice for the kids, fantastic for them. And uh, we're just, it's gonna be a bit of a struggle getting the van out this morning. I haven't even sort of worked out how we're gonna drive it out. But once we're onto that pathway, there's, a, there's tracks there where other people have driven. So once we're out onto that, I think it's gonna be fine. It's just a case of um, whether I can actually get the van started in this cold. Yeah, I don't know. It's just a standard van. So I really hope it's okay in these sub temperatures because it's like minus 15. Apparently with the wind, it feels like minus 19, but I don't think it's that bad. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. So, catch up with you later, peace. So a little bit of change of scenery for you. We've just um, driven about an hour already on um, from Stirling, which was where we were, where our campsite was. Obviously you saw the snow. An hour down the road and there's barely a snow flake to be seen. So yeah, it's, well, you can see over there, that's where we come from. You can still see the snow over there, but obviously they've had better weather over this side of Colorado. So we was on country lanes for quite a while and it was a bit slow. The speed limit's a bit different on country lanes. It's 65 as opposed to 75. And we've just hit the 24, which is not actually an interstate. I thought it was, but it looks like it is just a highway. It's a highway road. So this is highway 24, which is two lanes and the uh, speed limit hasn't changed yet so we're still 65 but uh, it might open up a little bit later on about an hour to go till we get we pass through a few little towns as well we pass through last chance which is literally just got a fire station and we just passed through Le Mans, which was quite a cool little town so not really much else to say uh, till we get to our next destination which is probably going to be the diner put in colorado springs where we're going to have a nice lunch and yeah the, well, look at the driving conditions now this is just amazing Filled up with petrol before we left Stirling, around $70, where we've been paying between 50 and 60 to fill up before. So I think it was actually cheaper petrol, but we filled up more because the petrol light was on. So I'm not sure how many we've done in gallons or litres, but yeah, we are on the open road on our way to Colorado Springs.